events I'm about to relate began a fortnight ago in a grim old house perched high on a cliff on the west coast of Scotland. This singular structure is known as Drearcliff House. Gathered there for dinner were the seven members of a most extraordinary club called the Good Comrades. Into this unique gathering came their melancholy housekeeper, Mrs. Monteith, bearing a message for Ralph King, a retired barrister. King received it casually. When they saw the contents, the good comrades took the whole thing as a joke. But their housekeeper was right. It was no laughing matter. For on the following night, Ralph King died horribly. But this was only the beginning. A few nights later, as the good comrades gathered to drink a final toast to their departed member, Mrs. Monteith entered with a second envelope, this time addressed to Stanley Rayburn, in his day a distinguished actor. This time you may be sure there was no laughter. These men were afraid and their fear was justified. For once again, the message proved to be a portent of death. It was 10 days before Rayburn's battered body was recovered. Hmm. Tell me, Mr. Chalmers, what do these envelopes contain? In the first case, seven orange pips or seeds. In the second case, six. And the number of orange pips refer to the surviving members. A grim warning, eh, Holmes? Looks like murder. Not necessarily, Watson. A moment ago, you referred to this club as uh, extraordinary. Why? All of the members are past middle age, retired, and without near kin. Six months ago, they formed this club here in London, then promptly left for Drearcliffe, the ancestral home of a Mr. Bruce Alistair, their eldest member. Nothing very remarkable about that. Sounds rather friendly, as a matter of fact. The remarkable fact is that all seven of these men appear to have but one thing in common. Huh? What's that? Can I mention, my dear Watson, each is worth a great deal more dead than alive. That's right, Mr. Holmes. How did you guess? My dear Mr. Chalmers, you represent the Association of Insurance Underwriters. You're worried about the untimely deaths of these two good comrades. Ergo, these men must carry rather large insurance policies. Yes, but that's not all. Shortly after forming this club, all these seven men changed their policies, making the other members their beneficiaries. The policies total over a hundred thousand pounds. That's very enlightening. You paid the uh, five surviving members on the policies of uh, King and Rayburn? Oh, yes, we always pay promptly. But what worries me, Mr. Holmes, is uh, whether these two deaths were accidental or not. Exactly. exactly. Of course, I may be wrong. I have no proof, but it seems to me just possible that one of these men plans to murder the others one by one. And collect on all the policies. I see the whole thing, Holmes. Bravo, Watson, but why the orange pips? Oh, yes, the orange pips. Pips, Watson. A bit of a puzzler, eh, Holmes? Quite. The most intriguing feature. It's back all around this place. After all, Mr. Holmes, several lives may be at stake. The temptation of sudden wealth could... Could uh, possibly turn one of these seemingly harmless men into a ruthless killer. Exactly. Eh? Uh, are those the good comrades? Yes. Oh. Let me see him, will you? Hello. Who's this fellow on the end? That's Dr. Merivale. Dr. Dr. Simon Merivale? I believe his Christian name is Simon. Yes, definitely Dr. Simon Merivale. I'll accept your case, Mr. Chalmers. Watson, pack your things. We're off to Scotland tonight. <laughs> Thank you. 
Scotland, home of my ancestors. A lonely land, but a peaceful one. <laughs> it's wonderful off the stuffy London, eh, Holmes? I say, who is this Dr. Mirabeau? Oh, well, if you want to behave like a clam, you haven't uttered a word since we left London. Sorry, old fellow, I was thinking. Twenty years ago, Dr. Merivale was a famous surgeon in Harley Street. Can't be so very famous. I never heard of him. Nobody was. His main claim to distinction, of course, was the unnecessarily brutal murder of his young bride. Really? However, he testified so brilliantly in the witness box that he was acquitted. After which, he dropped completely out of sight. And you think that he was most probably responsible for the death of these two good comrades? Well, I don't say that he was, but I do say that he could have been. Murder's an insidious thing, Watson. Once a man has dipped his fingers in blood, sooner or later he'll feel the urge to kill again. Good gracious me. Very unpleasant. <laughs> Funeral home. You suppose we're too late? Oh, I think you're unnecessarily suspicious, Watson. One of the villagers, eh? Aye, sir. Mr. McTavish, the blacksmith. No, daughter, don't be talking to strangers. It wasn't her fault. I asked your daughter whose funeral it was. Andy McTavish. Cut down in the flower of his manhood. What a pity. Young fellow, eh? Just 72. 72? Flower of his manhood? Trying to be funny. Come on, Watson. Oh, 72, flower of his manhood. <laughs> well, it's about 40 men. Very what do you want? What can I do for you, gentlemen? We telegraphed the reservations from London. Name, sir? Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Yes, we're here. Your room's ready, sir. Thank you. Stand there, gentlemen. Yes, indeed. Are you staying long, gentlemen? No, not long. Well, we just came up here to look into the... We just came up here for the shooting. Shooting? Yes, sir. Uh, grouse, of course. <laughs> No grouse here, sir, for the for the last 40 years. No grouse? Cheer up, Watson. You'll find some other quality to occupy our time. This way, gentlemen. Take the gun, will you? Take the big bag. earlier than usual, Dr. Merivale. Gentlemen, I've just made a rather intriguing discovery. The village of Inverneal has a distinguished visitor. Huh? Really? Who? Oh. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Who? I didn't quite catch the name. Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective. One wonders what he can be doing in Inverneal. Have you forgotten, Alistair, that two of our members have already met with violent deaths? Yes, 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 of course, yes. Cosgrave, must you pace up and down like a monkey in a ruddy cage? I fail to see how what I do can concern you. Simpson! Cosgrave! Cannot we behave like good comrades? Doesn't anything ever get on your nerves, Alistair? Oh, dear me, no. I have no nerves. <laughs> Now, tell me, McGregor, the present head of the house is Mr. Bruce Alastair, is it not? Aye. Grandson of Donald Alastair. He, he was the lawless one. He turned Drearcliff House into a smuggler's den. Got himself blown to bits by a gun. Gracious me. Uh, and Angus Alastair was his son. He was eaten by cannibals in the South Seas. Very unfortunate family, eh, huh? They found Angus's bones. Sent them back to Drearcliff, where no man ever goes whole to his grave. The place is haunted. Haunted? You, you, you mean ghosts? Only a fool believes in ghosts. Spirits never haunted Drearcliff. Five minutes to close in time, gentlemen. Only the memory of evil. Mm. 
You're wanted at Drearcliff House, Sergeant. What is it, woman? Murder. Alistair himself, is it? I don't know. Dr. Merrivale didn't say. Mr. Holmes, would you care to come along? Yes, I would. Thank you. Watson? You mark my words. Alistair has met the brutal death of his father. Ah, good evening, Sergeant. Oh, Mr. Alistair, this is Mr. Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. I took the liberty of... Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? Oh, this is excellent, most excellent. Please come in, gentlemen. Thank Please you. come in. And welcome to Dreyfus House. Now, where is the uh, corpse? Follow me. It's by the furnace. The furnace? Yes, poor Davis. He was burnt to a crisp. Burnt to a crisp? I say, Holmes, this murderer sounds a bit of a fiend, eh? At least he's consistent. Consistent? Yes, the deaths all follow the legend of Dreyfus. Whereas McGregor puts it, no man ever goes whole to his grave. I will come in here, gentlemen, won't you? Oh, thank you. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. These gentlemen have come about the body. Why didn't you take them to the cellar? Oh, no, Dr. Merivale. You discovered it. After all, it's your body. That's right. I say, you're Sherlock Holmes, aren't you? I am, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Yes, I thought I recognized you. You know, I've followed your exploits for years. The detection of crime is one of my hobbies. This is a surprise and a pleasure. A pleasure, I hope, but hardly a surprise. You saw me at the inn this afternoon. Touché. Uh, this is Alan Cosgrave. And Captain Simpson. How do you do? How do you do? A distressing business, Mr. Holmes. We were all fond of Guy Davis. Davis? Oh, the fellow in the furnace. Mm. But if he was burnt to a crisp, how do you know that it was Davis? Well, he's the only one missing. Besides, we identified him by his cufflinks. But you'll see for yourselves. Come along, gentlemen. Thank you. Good chap. May I ask, Dr. Merivale, whether Mr. Davis also received the warning of the orange pips at dinner? Oh, so you know about the others. You seem to be very well informed about our affairs, Mr. Holmes. As a matter of fact, Davis didn't have dinner with us tonight. Had he indicated his intended absence? No. No, he hadn't. Mrs. Monteith was quite put out about it. Pardon me, will you, gentlemen? Dr. Watson, what's Mr. Holmes up to? I haven't the fog you. Oh, you'll find out, my dear sir, in good time. Isn't there something you wish to tell me, Mrs. Monteith? Me, sir? Yes. Please give it to me. The envelope addressed to Mr. Guy Davies. Thank you. Five pips this time. Hmm. How do you know that she had them? It's obvious, my dear Watson. Since Mr. Davis was not at dinner, Mrs. Monteith had no opportunity to deliver the envelope. Yes, of course. Quite obvious. Where'd you find it? It was pushed under the door, like the others. Thank you, Mrs. Monteith. That will be all. Where are they coming from, Mr. Holmes? Who's sending these things to us? Is there anyone who might have a grudge against you? Have orange pips any significance for any of you? Uh, well? I seem to remember reading somewhere that among some obscure tribe of savages, orange pips were looked upon as, <laughs> as a symbol of death. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, Sergeant. Aye, sir. I think you'd better telephone Scotland Yard. Oh, we've, we've never had a telephone at Gearcliffe House, no. They're so noisy. I can make the call from the village, sir. All right. It's not often we have the opportunity of meeting such charming people. Okay. You go ahead, I'll follow you. I'm afraid, Mr. Holmes, if you don't go with the Sergeant, there's no way to get back to the village tonight. Oh, but, Mr. Holmes, there's no need for you to stay at the inn. It's such a dreary place. We've plenty of room here, and it's much more cheerful. I thought we came here for privacy. We wouldn't dream of putting you out. Oh, but I thought it would be so nice to have such, such exciting people as our guests. <laughs> Thanks very much. I'm sure Mr. Holmes' business in the village is much more important, Alistair. Please, Mr. Holmes, we insist. 
I think Alistair's idea is an excellent one, don't you, gentlemen? You speak for yourself, Cosgrave. Come, come, come. We are all friends, aren't we? Or are we? Guy Davis was a friend, too. So were King and Rayburn. You've got to stay, Mr. Holmes. You and Dr. Watson, we can put you up. Any objections, Dr. Merivale? This is a tapest and a teapot, Mr. Holmes, but you're welcome, of course. And now, if you'll all excuse me, I'm rather tired. Good night. What do you say, Simpson? Glad to have you, gentlemen, of course. Then you will stay, both of you? Well, thank you, Mr. Alistair. We should be very glad to. Sergeant, will you have our things sent up from the inn? Right away, sir. This is excellent. I'll tell Mrs. Monteith to get your rooms ready. Mr. Holmes, I must say I feel a lot safer now that you and Dr. Watson are in the house. Oh, delighted to be of any use, Mr. Kosky. And, uh, well, if you would care to keep me informed if you should discover anything, I would be only too glad to help you. I'd do anything to get to the bottom of this awful mystery. I'll bear that in mind, Mr. Cosgrave. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Well, what do you make of it, Watson? Well, my theory is it's Dr. Melville. Do you take a look at his eyes? Rather mm. frightening, eh? Yes, but that might be accounted for by advanced myopia, mm -hmm. complicated with astigmatism. Well, who do you think it is? At the moment, I suspect no one and everyone. So it's your theory that Dr. Melville's the murderer? Yes, yes, Melville. Mm. What about, uh, what about Captain Simpson? Simpson? I see what you mean. Do you? Yes, there's a surly looking chap if I saw one. He didn't much relish our being asked to stay here either. Right you are, Watson. Do you suspect anyone else? Well, of course, there's old Alistair. And what might cause you to suspect Alistair? Well, he's too good to be true. For now, Holmes. I wish I knew Watson. <laughs> Someone's got a morbid taste in literature. Or a thirst for knowledge. Well, Holmes, there's one of them that's got nothing to do with it. Who? Cosgrave. Why Cosgrave? Oh, he's definitely got the wind up. Fairly begged us to stay just now. Yes. I advise for Cosgrave, all right. Mrs. Monteith will be down directly to show you to your rooms. I just popped in to say good night. Oh, thank you. I trust you'll sleep well. Oh, by the way, Mr. Alistair, I wonder if you could tell us which one of you suggested changing your insurance policies, making the other members of your club the beneficiaries. Oh, let me see now. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Just dear old Alan. Alan? Yes, Alan Cosgrave. Good night. Good night. Cosgrave. I suspected him from the start. Yes, you did, didn't you? How about a pipe before we go to sleep? Sleep? I shan't be able to close my eyes in this sinister house. Your rooms are ready, gentlemen. Where's our good friend, Dr. Watson? Oh, he was rather tired last night. He's still sleeping. <laughs> yes, our beds are very comfortable here. Why don't you stop that runny marathon? Your bodyguard's here now. Simpson, you mustn't tease Cosgrave. Remember how sensitive he is. You should ignore things, like Alistair. Thank you. Oh, uh, Singapore? Huh? The, uh... Oh, the Cobra. Now, you'll never know that one. But this one. Oh, yes, yes, very good. And definitely Singapore. Right you are, Mr. Holmes. You know your tattoos, all right. I'm interested in many things. Good morning, gentlemen. I'm sorry I'm late. I didn't sleep very well. You didn't sleep very well. You snored like a pig. Rubbish. Got a match, Dr. Watson? Yes, I go. It's a very good idea. I think I'll join you. Nothing like the, the first pipe of the morning. Can... Can I try some of yours? Well, it's quite all right, thanks. I think I'll stay clear. Uh, what is that uh, 
Seaweed? Havana, isn't it? Hey, flavor with Jamaica rum. I don't imagine you're very much troubled with tobacco borrowers, eh, Simpson? <laughs> Nobody else in the place touches the filthy stuff. I don't blame them. Good heavens! One moment, please. What is it? Just a needle. Who put that in my chair? Hmm. This is no ordinary needle. The stain on my handkerchief suggests a certain sinister possibility. Isn't that Beaker, will you? Yes, of course. We shall see. Thank you. As I thought. Insoluble in alcohol. Whatever is it? Well, judging by the stain of my handkerchief and the milky precipitation in alcohol, I should say it was a derivative of the tropocene family. Pyrotropocene, possibly. That's right, Dr. Merrivale, a deadly poison. Close shave, Captain Simpson. One drop in the bloodstream brings agonizing, almost instant death. It's our custom at this hour to honor our departed friends. I hope you gentlemen will pardon us. We quite understand, Dr. Mirabel. Please proceed. Thank you. Good comrades, our dear friend Guy Davis has gone to his reward. Let those of us who remain drink to our dead and to that bright tomorrow when we shall join them in a better, happier world. Wait a minute. There's something wrong here. If you please, Captain Simpson. The odor of bitter almonds. Bitter almonds? Prussic acid, eh? Prussic acid? There must be some mistake. Mistake, eh? Lucky I didn't make it by drinking that stuff. Well, what have you got to say? Whichever one of you it was tried to kill me, had better look out. I'm a dangerous man to fool with. Hadn't we be better adjourn? I mean to say that we've not yet finished the toast to our dead. But do you think it's quite safe? Don't be absurd, Alistair. Take my glass. I assure you, it hasn't been poisoned. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miller. To our departed comrades. Mr. Cosgrave. It says so in the envelope. It's come. Did you find this envelope as you did the others? Aye. When? It was pushed under the door when everyone was in here at dinner. Thank you. Well, there's one thing we can be sure of. None of us could have brought it. How do we know that she's not responsible for them? Mrs. Monteith. That's absurd, Cosgrave, utterly absurd. She has been with my family all her life. A dubious recommendation, if you ask me. Oh, Mr. Holmes, when do you expect the man from Scotland Yard? Inspector Lestrade, he should be here early in the morning. Unless he got on the wrong train. <laughs> I trust you're right, Mr. Holmes. I trust you're right. Oh, dear, he's terribly upset. Dr. Merivale, can't you do something for him? I could stay with him in his room tonight. Why, that's an excellent idea. And I shall be just across the hall from him. I think that's the wisest possible course, with you gentlemen protecting each other. What harm can befall you? Well, then, we must hope for the best. Come, Mary Bell. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Good night. Good night. I say, Holmes, have you gone out of your mind? Cosgrave just got the orange pips, and you're letting Mary sleep in the same room with him. You'll be all right. All right. But what's to prevent Mary killing him in his sleep? I hardly think he'll stick his own neck squarely in the noose. Oh, yes, I see what you mean. Well, the field's narrowing down, Holmes. Captain Simpson is certainly cleared. How? Oh. Yes, he's definitely been eliminated. The killer had two trials to him today. Nonsense, my dear Watson. 
No one's tried to murder Captain Simpson. Well, how about the poison needle we both saw? Uh, Captain Simpson spotted it, if you'll recall, from about where you are. Oh, it's so extraordinary about that. Can you see the needle there now? No? Well, there is one. Huh? Gracious. How did it get there? I placed it there myself just before we went into supper. You couldn't see it, yet you have exceptional eyesight. Well, you'd have to have telescopic eyes to see it from over there. Exactly. You mean that Simpson... Well, how about the... The acid in his drink. There wasn't any acid in his drink. Oh, it definitely smelt like bitter almonds. It should. That's exactly what it was. Bitter almonds. How do you know? Because I put it in his drink myself. You did? Great Scott, why? To observe his reaction. It was quite different from that of the morning. The first was acting, the second genuine terror. Hence I knew that he'd undoubtedly planted the needle himself. Oh, why should he? Well, there are several possible explanations, the most obvious, of course, to avert suspicion. And you, uh, you think Simpson's behind all this? I don't know, Watson. This is a most unique case. Instead of too few, we have too many clues and too many suspects. The main pattern of the puzzle seems to be forming, but the pieces don't fit in. Well, it seems perfectly clear to me. One of these men is picking off the others one by one to get all their insurance money for himself. Well, it's, it's obvious. How do you account for the orange pips? Well, this man has an accomplice who brings them. What for? To warn his victim that he's going to be murdered? No, oh, Watson, it won't do it. won't do it at all. I don't like the look of it, Holmes. Muddy waters, huh? Too muddy. As if someone were constantly stirring them up. Well, why should they stir them up? To confuse me. There's intelligence behind this business, Watson. Cold, calculating... ruthless intelligence. <coughs> Must you smoke that filthy stuff? Smells like an old sock. Strong tobacco keeps one awake. You'd better have a pipe full. We have a long vigil ahead of us tonight. No, thank you. I don't need any of that stinkweed to keep me awake in this chamber. This chamber of horrors. This way, Inspector Lestrade. Thank you very much, my good woman. What? Well, well, Mr. Holmes. Uh, Dr. Watson. Uh, uh, this How are you, Lestrade? Here, mm. here. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's going on here? Someone just tried to kill Dr. Watson. Blimey, you. When we find that out, Lestrade, we can all go home. All right, Mr. Holmes. Scotland Yard will take charge of this. Have a look around the grounds, Peter, will you? Yes, Inspector. Holmes. I'm afraid something's happened to Cosgrave and Merivale. What? The door of their room's locked. I can't get any answer. What is going on here? Oh, I do hope they're all right. Got your skeleton key, Lestrade? Yes, I have. Wait a minute. Watson. Lestrade, oh. give me a hand. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Get him on the bed. Oh, you, you got him? Yes, oh, go ahead. What a dreadful thing to happen. Oh, poor Merivale. Is he badly hurt? Yes, he's had a nasty crack on the head. What? What's... Uh, take it easy, Doctor. Don't try and talk. Mrs. Monteith, get me some uh, cotton wool and some hot water as quickly as you can. Tell me what happened. He's in no state to be questioned now, Lestrade. Who do you suspect, Mr. Holmes? I don't know, Lestrade. But it's connected with the attack on Dr. Watson. It was obviously intended to draw me downstairs. Where's Cosgrave? Here, I'm taking what? over here. 
It looks to me that this Cosgrave, whoever he is, is our murderer. Well, he didn't murder Dr. Merivale. He's still alive. Yes. Yes, he is, isn't he? Well, just the same, I'd like to ask this Cosgrave a few questions. I don't think you're going to find Mr. Cosgrave. At least, not alive. Oh, well, what's going on here? I'm afraid Holmes is right, Inspector. Shh. Poor Cosgrave. By now, he's probably murdered like the others. Murdered? Oh, dear. What's so interesting about that rope, Mr. Holmes? I was looking at this knot, Lestrade. To Bolan. Much favored by seafaring men. Ooh, sailor, eh? Simpson. Simpson? Captain Simpson. But, but no, 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 no. It couldn't be. How do you know he couldn't be? Stanister, where is Captain Simpson? He's not in his room either. I looked when I tried to rouse Cosgrave and Merivale. Has anybody seen this Simpson this morning? I saw him walking across the garden, Inspector, about 15 minutes ago. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Which is the way down? How did I get up here? Suffering cats, what is going on here? Have you any explosives on the place? Yes, we have some dynamite stored in the shed behind the stone room. What do you need dynamite for? Just to blow up some cumbersome rocks. Pretty badly mangled, Holmes. Can't tell who it is. It's Cosgrave, all right. Poor Alan. Cosgraves, I presume. Certainly looks like the ring he wore. Yes. Yes, of that I'm positive. Look here. What was he doing with dynamite at this time in the morning? That we shall never know. Oh, dear, and it was all my fault. I never should have let them keep it here. Don't blame yourself, Mr. Alistair. This body was carried here. Look. Observe those heavy footprints. So I see the whole thing. Cosgrave was knocked unconscious, thrown into the shed, and, and deliberately blown up. Yes. This chap was carrying an heavy burden, all right. Hello. Who are you? My name is Simpson. Captain Simpson. I'm Inspector Lestrade from Scotland Yard. What do you know about this murder? Well, I was walking on the East Terrace when I saw Cosgrave enter the shed where the dynamite stored. Hmm. Do you mind comparing your shoes with one of these footprints? Are you accusing me, Inspector? I'll tell you in a minute. Put your foot in one of these prints. Nonsense, Lestrade. You've only to look at the shoes of everyone present to know that these footprints are much too big to have been made by anybody here. With the possible exception of you, Lestrade. Look here, Dr. Watson, that ain't funny. Captain Simpson, how did you happen to be walking on the terrace at the time of the explosion? I couldn't sleep and I was taking a stroll before breakfast. I see. What do you know about this knot, Captain? It's a ball of course. I don't suppose you've ever seen it before. What the devil are you driving at? This knot is evidence that will hang a murderer. And he might not be standing so far away from the arm of the Lord at this very moment. Oh, come now, Lestrade. This knot proves absolutely nothing. Ah? Uh -huh. Practically anybody can tie one. Yeah? Uh, can you? Yes, I think I can, Lestrade. There you are. Well, <laughs> quite a knotty problem, eh? Ah. With your permission, gentlemen, Captain Simpson and I will go and make arrangements for the funeral of our friend. Come, Simpson. I wonder which one of the three remaining good comrades will be the next to receive the orange pips. Orange pips? Won't someone please tell me what's going on here? Where is that confounded woman with the brandy? Mrs. Monteith! Well, there you are. It's about time, too. Let's get on with the ceremony. About this, Inspector. What are you going to do? Orange pips, eh? The police will handle this. We will protect you. Holmes tried to protect Cosgrave. He's dead. Scotland Yard's in charge now. Just you come along with me. Just a moment, Simpson. We've not yet drunk our usual toast to the dead. To the Dickens with the dead. From now on, I'm thinking of myself. Just you come along with me, Captain.
Oh, it's you, Inspector. My nerves are all on edge. Just wanted to make sure you were all snug, Captain. You're sure I'm safe here? I'm safe as the Bank of England. You're protected from every angle. On the terrace is Sergeant Bleeker, out of sight but on the job every second, while in the shrubbery is the local sergeant of police, ready to pounce if the blighter should come that way. That's fine, Inspector. While I myself guard the lower hall, hoping and praying the killer should come my way. Come so on. Sounds very thorough, but I don't like it very well. Oh, go on. Tuck yourself in and relax. Scotland Yard will look after the rest. Good night. Good night, Inspector. your vigil, Lestrade? Uh, what do you know about my vigil? My dear fellow, you held a very secret conference with Captain Simpson and packed everyone off to bed. It follows us the night the day you must be baiting a trap. Oh. Where'd you find those boots? In the cupboard. I've been looking for them all day. Hardly enough, they weren't there an hour ago. Oh, weren't they? Those shoes are big enough for those footprints we saw this morning. Right you are, Inspector. And observe the clay. A very particular variety of clay. Ready, Holmes? Yes, Watson. Like to join us in a little stroll on the beach? Uh, no, thank you. You and Dr. Watson go play in the sand as much as you like, but I'm going to stay right here to catch the murderer. Good luck. Yeah, well, if you get nervous, you know where we are. Look, Watson, footprints. Hi, Joe. Fairly fresh, too. Very fresh. Bigfoot, all right. Got your revolver? Yeah. Not much time to lose. The tide's coming in fast. You see, he goes along here. Wait a minute. Now he stops. To light his pipe. Observe the spilled tobacco and burn match. Now he goes on again. Wait a minute. Here we are. Hello. What is it, Holmes? Another set of footprints. Bigfoot's yeah. been joined by somebody. This one's a, a smaller man. Now they go along together. Side by side. Rather slowly, I should say, judging by the spacing of the footprints. Our little foot goes up the cliff. And Bigfoot goes on alone. Hello. Something funny there. Footprints disappear altogether. Look out, Watson! Great Scott Holmes, that was meant for us. Precisely. Well, there's nothing more to be done here. I have a strong feeling we are needed back at Drecliffe House. With a possible exception of your own, Lestrade. <laughs> Blimey, they're bigger. Here, here. Who's pulling around in his lock? Sergeant Blaker! Blaker! Sergeant Blaker! Oh, Mr. Holmes. Where's Simpson? He's in the... What? He's gone. I left him here on this here couch. Someone fair bashed my head in. Do you see his face? Who? The murderer, you blithering idiot. The murderer and his victim, Captain Simpson. All I saw was stars. Oh. It's your theory, Lestrade, that someone broke through this window and abducted Captain Simpson. It's no theory. It's obvious. Then how do you account for the fact that there's no sign of broken glass on this side of the window? Blimey. No, there isn't. Therefore, the window was broken from the inside. Stick by us, old man. We'll make a detective of you yet. Ah, I say, what happened? Uh, Captain Simpson seems to have disappeared. Disappeared my foot. He's run away. 
He really was frightened, you know. That's just what he wanted us to think. No harm would have come to him here if he'd stayed, and he knew it. I was right in the first instance. He's our blasted murderer himself. Dear me. Captain Simpson, a murderer? Don't you worry, Mr. Alistair. We'll soon have him in jail before he can kill anyone else. Aye. You'll find him like the others. A corpse. Don't you worry, gentlemen. It's only just a question of time before we catch Captain Simpson. He can't have got far. My men will soon apprehend him. You know, this rather reminds me of a very similar occurrence. When I brought about the undoing of the notorious Professor Moriarty. You brought it about. It hadn't been for Mr. Holmes. Oh, well, of course, with the kindly assistance of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. We found him, Inspector. There you are. What did I tell you? Where is he? At the beach, sir. Dead? Oh, yes, sir. Quite. Dead? How did you know he was dead, Mr. Holmes? Well, I mentioned, my dear Lestrade, the pieces of the puzzle are beginning to fall into place. In what way was the body mutilated? Well, no arms, no legs, and no head, sir. Observe the recurrence of the pattern, Watson. I see. No man goes whole to his grave, eh? Exactly. Oh, dear. Poor Simpson. Well, love me, if it was nothing but a blooming torso, how did you know you got the right man? Quite simple, Lestrade. Sergeant Bleeker identified the body by the full-rigged ship tattooed on the chest. That's right, Mr. Holmes. Tattooed? Where did you know he had a blinking boat on his epidermis? Oh, uh... I mentioned it to Sergeant Bleeker when he asked me to describe the fugitive. Uh, that is, we thought at the time he was a fugitive. Oh. All right, Bleeker, you better be getting back to the beach. Yes, sir. One thing more, Sergeant. You say that the body had no arms, nor head, and no legs. Was it a, a messy job? Oh, no, sir. Very neat, I should say. Clean as a whistle. Just as if it was done by a... Are the skilled hands of a surgeon? Yes. Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. What? About... Excuse me, Inspector. Please, Watson. Thank you. Hmm. So sorry, old fellow. No orange pips. Hey, just a minute. That might be police business. Inspector Lestrade must see you at once about the Deercliff mystery. Please come to my shop in the village as soon as possible. Alec McGregor. McGregor, the tobacconist. Where is his shop? Next to the inn. Oh, I'd better be off. Mind if I come along with you? All right, Mr. Holmes. If you think you can be any help. I think I'll come along too. No, Watson, you stay here. These are the last two members of the good comrades. Their safety depends on you. You can rely on me, Holmes. Posse while along with you, Mr. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. I was afraid of this. We're too late. Dead. I shall shut through the temple. How did you know we'd be too late, Mr. Holmes? Because we were not the first to read McGregor's message. What? Here, Lestrade. This envelope has been steamed open and resealed. By me, so it is. Poor chap, he must have known too much. Has the coroner been here yet, Sergeant? He's on his way, sir. All right. You won't find them. What do you mean? Orange pips. Why not? Ain't this the work of the Drearcliffe murderer? Obviously. But this isn't part of the same pattern as the others. They followed a preordained plan, whereas this murder was actuated by sudden necessity and could not have been anticipated. Come again, Mr. Holmes, in English. I mean that I'm beginning to see daylight. Well, frankly, I ain't. I like good, solid clues and people I can question. Did anybody near the shop, Sergeant? I did. Do you know anything about the note your father sent to Inspector Lestrade? Why, no, sir. Did he leave the house at all tonight? I, sir. 
He went to tend his lobster pots down in the cove below Driercliff. He didn't return until after dark. Here, let me question her. Did anyone call on your father this evening after he got home? No one that I saw, sir. Well, tell me just what happened. I was in the kitchen when I heard the shot. I ran in and found my father. I'm sorry, my dear. We won't bother you any further. Thank you, sir. This case gets more confusing every minute. We don't know a thing more now than we did before. On the contrary, my dear Lestrade. A Gregor saw something near Driercliff tonight, and that something caused his death. That's right. We'd better get back to that house as fast as we can. We're glad to get back to Baker Street. Let's see. Shoot! No moving. 
I warned you. Oh, done for you, all right. Thank you. All right, all in the line of duty. Who's that? Watson, what mess you up to? Holmes, thank heavens you arrived. You're just in time. They're all around the house. They've, they've got the computer surrounded. They? No, they are. Good Scott. This is something shame. Got the wind up over nothing. Oh, yes, I forgot. There was something. Alistair and Merrill are both missing. What? Oh, no, not that. Well, they're not in their rooms. You come along with me and I'll show you. Anything wrong, gentlemen? Have you left this here room since you retired? Certainly not. I've been reading. What? What's the trouble? It's no trouble at all. Please forgive us. Well, now we'll try Alistair's room. Right you are. Better try knocking this time, Watson. <laughs> What is it? Have you been out of your room, Mr. Alistair? Yes, for just a few minutes. I went down to the kitchen and I had such a nice glass of milk. Milk? Yes, it was most refreshing. Glass of milk. Don't disturb him. Glass of milk. He's lying, Holmes. Probably just one of your hallucinations, Doctor. Rubbish. And the word is called is hallucination. Whatever they are, they're just around it. Downstairs. <laughs> it's all right, Mrs. Monteith. I, I heard noises upstairs. I thought the murderer must be a prowl again. What are you doing with that cleaver? But you've nothing to fear now. Well, I'll be getting back to bed. Not a bad idea. I've had enough of this for one day. Oh, um, this is Monteith, please. The note you gave Inspector Lestrade, was it pushed under the door like the rest? Aye. Was there anything different about it this time? Think, Mrs. Monteith. Well? Yes? Just before I found the note under the door, I happened to look through the kitchen window. And I saw a man running away from the house as if Satan himself were after him. Did you recognize him? No. He was too far away. But he was dressed like a fisherman. Well, hadn't we better go down to the village and find them at once, Holmes? You'd only be wasting your time. Why? Because all the fishermen have gone off with the fleet, and they won't be back till tomorrow night. It's after nine now. Are you quite sure that the fishermen are coming in? Aye, sir, they always do. A long stretch on the water gives them an awful thirst. Why, the boats must be in. Here they come now, sir. A gentleman. A gentleman. I am Sherlock Holmes. Last night, McGregor sent one of you with a note to Dirkcliff House. Who was it? Speak up, please. It's vitally important. If I did take a note for old Alec, what of it? Perhaps you can help me to find his murderer. Where did he give you this? Don't at the call. He was waiting there when we come in from the net. What did he say when he gave it you? Well, he just asked me if I'd take it to Drearcliff for a half a crown. And I wouldn't have done it for a penny less. Because of the sinister legend of the place, eh? What else did McGregor say to you? Well, he asked me if I believed in ghosts. And I said, certainly not. And he said, no more do I. And he gave me the note and a half crown. Thank you, my friend. You've been very helpful. A round of drinks for these gentlemen, with my compliments. Thank you. Watson? Helpful? I can't say anything very helpful about that conversation. 
All he did was talk about ghosts. And what do ghosts suggest to you, Watson? I don't know. Graveyard? Exactly. Alec McGregor was buried today. I say, old fellow, what about giving me a hand? You're doing splendidly, Watson. I say, Holmes, I never did trust any of those people from the start. Who? Who? Those so-called good comrades. And that woman. Who? Mrs. Monteith, naturally. Who do you think I said? So, fella, where are you? Ooh. You, Holmes, of course. Ooh. Ow. Have you a nice little chat, Watson? Oh, there you are. Stupid bird up there. Silly bird. Hanging about a graveyard all that. Nothing else to do. <laughs> Interrupting a fellow's conversation. Got it, Holmes. Hop it up. I don't like this, Holmes. Amazing, Holmes. As I thought. Empty. Some body searchers got here ahead of us. The biggest corpse has been removed. What? Hurry, Watson. Come on, old fellow. There isn't a moment to lose. What's up, Holmes? Unless I'm greatly mistaken, there's about to be another murder. Mm -hmm. You, you wall-eyed idiot, if you don't shut up. Well, you know what to do? Yes, sir. We'll get going and hurry. I'm afraid we're too late, Watson. Where's the body, Lestrade? Which one is it? Dr. Merivale. I found him at the bottom of the cliff, crashed to a jelly by a huge rock. Good heavens. I identified the body by the suit of clothes he was wearing. And his watch. So oh. Alistair must be the murderer. Go right to the top of the class, Dr. Watson. He killed them all, one after the other, for the insurance money. I thought so. Obvious from the start. Yeah. What have you done with your prisoner, Inspector? Oh, he's safe enough. Safe enough? Yes, he's in the library. Perhaps I'd better go and keep an eye on him. Oh, you'll be all right, Doctor. He's handcuffed. Or pacing up and down. Just doing a bit of measuring, Lestrade. Oh, don't upset yourself, Mr. Holmes. You can't expect to solve every case. Ah, there you are. Suspected you from the start. Said to Holmes, that old fluff's too good to be true. But I didn't kill anybody. Really, I didn't. So it's quite natural for you to deny your guilt. Criminal instinct. Oh, what? Nothing. Got any tobacco on you? No, I don't smoke. But there's Simpsons there. He won't need it anymore. Poor Simpson. Well, if Holmes can smoke the beast of stuff, I suppose I can. That's funny. This may be important. I must tell Holmes at once. Dear me. Twenty-eight feet. It checks exactly. Whatever that may mean. It means that the final piece of the puzzle is falling into place. Oh, you can have your puzzle. I've got the murderer. Oh! Come on, Ostrad. Where's Dr. Watson? Oh, he, he went through that very door only a few moments ago looking for you. We heard a scream, did you? Oh, dear me, no. That's strange. We didn't see him as we came through the dining room. Mm. Did you say anything before he left? Yes. He wasn't very kind to me at first. He was standing just where you're standing, Mr. Holmes. He asked me if I had any tobacco, but as you know, I don't smoke. And I suggested that he might take some of Captain Simpson's. Well, he pulled out his pipe, and he was just about to fill it, when he said, Oh, this may be important. I must see Holmes at once. Thank you, Mr. Alistair. And uh, don't you move. This wall measures 28 feet outside, and inside it's obviously several feet less. What are you looking for? The entrance to a passage. What passage? It could only be on that outside wall. 
Oh, we could knock the wall down for you, Mr. Holmes. What you don't realize, Mr. Stroud, is they're desperate. They'd stop at nothing. And they've got Dr. Watson. They use that. Get those candles, will you? All right. What are you doing here? I don't like to be alone. Precious. That must be the entrance to the stairs leading to the old smuggler's cave down below. The light patch is there. Give me the light. Oh dear. in there. The good comrades. Oh, no, no. They're dead. Are they? Come on now, get in line, all of you. I thought you were all dead. That's what they wanted us to think. Watson. Rayburn, King, Davis, Cosgrave, Merivale, Simpson. How dreadful of you. Thank heaven you're safe, Watson. Well, thank heavens you came, Holmes. In another minute, they'd have thrown me in the sea and got away on a boat, chartered by Simpson. It's out there now, offshore. Congratulations, Lestrade. You've bagged the lot. Ah, that's all right, Mr. Holmes. And may I congratulate you, gentlemen, on a very ingenious plan. I must confess, if you hadn't over-embellished it to the business of the orange pips, the sinister significance of the happenings at Drearcliff House might have escaped my attention altogether. You're quite eloquent, Mr. Holmes. And if Captain Simpson hadn't removed his tobacco from the library, you might still have effected your escape. Incidentally, Lestrade, I think you'll find that each of these gentlemen has his share of the insurance money, probably in a well-stuffed money belt. You fool, Simpson. I told you somebody would notice that tobacco jar. A fool, am I? Who asked this detective to come and stay at the house? He did. I had to, the way you and Merrivale were acting. Oh, shut up, Cosgrave. Don't tell me to shut up. You and your orange pips. You said they would divert suspicion, but did they? No. You and your orange pips fixed us. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Get back into line, all of you. Now, come on. You get back into line, all of you. Now then, hand over that money. Here, here, here. No more tricks like that. If it hadn't been for the sharp eyes of Mr. Holmes here, you might have... You might have shot someone. And I thought you were my friends. Such good friends. How could you? And never mind, my good man. You'll soon be in the dock with the rest of them. No, Lestrade. Mr. Alistair's completely innocent. They selected him as their dupe. Oh. It's all clear to me, Holmes, except one thing. Why did they kill McGregor? Because McGregor didn't believe in ghosts. One night on the beach, he saw a man he thought was dead. Probably our friend Bigfoot there. And was rash enough to write Lestrade a note about it. That note was his death warrant. Very pretty theorizing, Mr. Holmes. But you can't prove a thing. That remains to be seen. Lestrade, will you pick up Captain Simpson's revolver and have a look at it? One bullet fired? That's right, Mr. Holmes. I have no doubt the ballistics will prove that the missing bullet killed Alec McGregor. That's good enough for me. If what you say is true, Mr. Holmes, there ain't a jury in the country that won't convict him. And so, just retribution has been visited upon the six members of the Good Comrades whose nefarious plan was unmasked in the nick of time. By the brilliant detective work of Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard, of all the balderdash. 
Lestrade hadn't got the faintest idea what it was all about. Oh, I don't know, Watson. After all, we know who was responsible for solving the mystery of the good comrades. That's right. If it hadn't been for Mr. Holmes, that headline might have been about me. Mr. Holmes, one thing puzzles me. What? How do they manage those fake murders? Oh, oh elementary, my dear Charles, elementary. I can explain all that. Whenever there was a funeral of some old gaffer in the neighborhood, they, uh, they dug up the body and dressed it in the clothes of one of their members. Then they staged a fake death and mutilated the body beyond all recognition. In the meantime, the so-called corpse disappeared quietly into the smuggler's room underneath Dr Drewcliffe House. I think, I think that about sums up the whole thing. Tell me, Dr. Watson, in the simulated death of Captain Simpson, how do you account for the tattooing on the torso? Oh, the tattooing on the torso, well, uh, I, uh... Go on, Watson, tell him. Oh, the tattooing... Sorry, Holmes. Captain Simpson was an expert with the tattooer's needle. He merely duplicated the full rigged ship on the chest of the corpse. I also observed that the design on the torso had been done within the previous 24 hours. Dear me, what a gruesome idea. Out of gratitude for what you've done, the companies that I represent wish you to accept this check. No, Mr. Chalmers, I think Mr. Alistair here is much more deserving of a reward than I am. Dear me, but they, they took me in completely. I didn't help you solve the case. No, but you did much more than that. It was your timely warning when you drew our attention to the empty tobacco jar and saved the life of my dear friend and colleague, Dr. John H. Watson. Very nice of you, huh? <laughs> By enabling us to continue our long and happy association together. <laughs>